welcome to the Teen Tech City of Tomorrow National Showcase. We are so excited to be able to share all of the wonderful designs, ideas and models that you've been creating over the past 12 months. Over 4,000 young people took part in the project and um, some of you will have done this at school and then after March some of you will have taken part in our virtual sessions. Either way, your ideas are amazing and we thought you would really like to see what everyone had been up to. So to take a look through them, we've got some really exciting people. We've got experts from BT, Rolls-Royce, Atkins and an architect. But first, I want to introduce you to two very special people. Ali, who, of course, has been leading the sessions. And Davis Campbell, who is the patron of Teen Tech City of Tomorrow and knows the whole project incredibly well. Um, it is so exciting, isn't it, when all these ideas come through? Yeah, you kind of you you sort of have faith in the world again when you see when you see these ideas. Every I mean, every year we do it, we we look at these ideas and, and I'm constantly blown away just by the sheer imagination. And I think well, this year is a particularly special year because obviously people have have been doing it in isolation. They've been doing it at home, away from the schools where we normally are. So I'm going to be really interested to see this, the the sort of difference, particularly in things like the, the models that have been made and videos that have been shot and that kind of thing. Yeah, it's really lovely. So we, we've got buildings that were submitted from the schools that we went to and they've worked on them yeah. some more. We've got buildings from the students that have been taking part at our at-home sessions. And I've got to say, I've been putting together the presentations. They're some of the, the just the best, most joyful presentations you could um, hope to see. Good, good. I, I, People can comment as we go along, can't they? Yeah, absolutely. So if you've got any questions for our experts or if there's any buildings that you like the look of, you'd like us to read out some of your comments, underneath this video, there's a question comments box. Uh, so just fill that in. I'll, I'll read some of the comments out as we go through uh, the session. Am, am I allowed to comment or do I have to be quiet? <laughs> an impartial, an impartial observer. <laughs> absolutely. Well, I should say that, that Dallas is well known for really getting to the top and bottom of cities um, in, in a way that I, I, sometimes I find it quite hard to look. Uh, I mean, when, when you went to that really, that, well, the tallest building in the world, for heaven's sake. Well, yeah, I, I've been really lucky. I mean, part of part of the sort of the televisions uh, that I make is is all about cities and how cities work and the types of buildings that that we build in cities uh, to make them work kind of over time. And I was really lucky. A few years ago, I went to Dubai, and Dubai, uh, you know, right in the middle of the desert, but famous now, of course, for having the world's tallest building. And that world's tallest building record is something that cities have always strived for. And it's a, it's a symbol of importance and it's a great uh, status symbol. Um, one of the buildings I visited a few times is the Great Pyramid in, e in Egypt on, on the Giza Plateau. And that building, that was the tallest building for 4,000 years. That's how important that pyramid was. But of course, that pyramid it's just a big pile of rocks, uh, you know, uh, you know, in the simplest shape you can imagine. Something like the Burj Khalifa in Dubai that I visited a few years ago takes the tallest building to a whole new level. And this is this is a picture. I don't know if you, that in, in, so in the white helmet, that's not me. That's uh, Julius, our cameraman who shot it with a with a camera uh, on the top. So that is the world's highest selfie. Um, and I always I, I wanted to show that one because it's normally when you watch these programs, you see me as the presenter. But I spare a thought for Julius, who had to be even higher. If you can see just behind him, there's that box. That's a box that keeps the, the sort of aircraft warning light on it. Um, and he actually had to sit on that to, to film me. So he was even higher than me. But that's on top of the actual spike of the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. And you can see just looking around a sense of scale you can see some of the some of the other buildings i mean that is orders of magnitude higher than anyone's built before and that's because of a revolution in, in building techniques and new materials and imagination and ideas and science and technology and, and that's why i find that building so amazing and terrifying <laughs> and, I, yeah. and I'll, I'll never do that again <laughs> from that wonderful bird's eye view of a city yeah. to the things which are hidden um, but really important underground. 
Yeah, well, that's true. Exactly. You know, cities, when we're walking around a city, we see the buildings, we see above surface. But of course, it's what's going on beneath your feet uh, that is the real key to cities. Things like the London Underground, if you live in London or any city that has a subway that gets you from A to B in underground tunnels. But also things like, you know, things we don't particularly want to think about because they're not very nice things to think about. Things like waste disposal, sewers, for example, in London where I live. I mean, the sewers, these are Victorian sewers. So this is this is me. This was a program I did a, a few years ago, um, tr breaking up a fatberg in a sewer. Now, when we pour our oil down the sink, if you do, you shouldn't pour your oil down the sink. What it does is, in the sewage systems underground, it, it sort of coagulates and turns into these things called fatbergs. And they have to send um, people like me down um, in <laughs> to sort of break them up. And I tell you what, that day, the smell was absolutely disgusting so along that sewer all the waste from london goes all the unmentionables all the poo and wee <laughs> fat and numska <laughs> yeah. and uh, we had to break it all up with a spade it was really really grim um yeah some people get all the fun jobs anyway so i go from the highest heights to the lowest lows yeah and, and you don't have the monopoly on unusual <laughs> things either because oh. um, in in all of my years that when i worked on tomorrow's world um people often used to say did you actually get anything? Was any of the tech actually shared with you? And the answer to that is no, because it's all at prototype stage and not working very well. But I did collect a couple of things. I'm gonna show you one of them now, um, which is this. And um, for fun only, what do you think it is? Where do you think it came from? And what is it for? So um, just, Send me through your answers on our, our link there. Wow, that you looks like... To see if you know. Yeah, it's, a, what, it's an interesting looking thing. I think I have a clue, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reserve my judgment for later and see what everyone else thinks it's for. So, Ali, time now to meet our experts. Yeah, so good morning. Let me, um, let me introduce you to everyone. If you've been taking part in our, in our weekly sessions, uh, you might recognise some of these faces. We've got Adrian, first of all, top left from Atkins. Good morning. And then we've got uh, Lucy, top right from BT as well. Good morning, Lucy. Uh, you might all be muted. Um, Richard from Rolls-Royce has joined us uh, on a couple of occasions. Good morning, Richard. There we are. And Louise Underhill, who's an architect as well. Good morning, Louise. Hello. Hi. Hi. So they're going to be giving some feedback on each of the categories this morning. And again, if you've got any questions for Adrian, Lucy, Richard or Louise, you can submit them in the question comments box and we'll, we'll put some of your questions to them at the end uh, as well. So we asked you to send us short videos explaining what made your building really special. And we have got 14 different categories. Now, you may have submitted your building and said, I'm putting this in the environmentally friendly category. Um, don't panic if you don't see it, because we might have thought, oh, that's a really innovative building. Let's put it in the innovative category. So just to sort of warn you that your building might not appear exactly where you think it's going to uh, appear. So 14 categories, um, some of them are really big. So uh, when we look through all of the, your ideas for the homes of the future, that is a big category. And then others are of different sizes. And that just reflects the number of buildings that have come through the, the whole project while we've been doing it over the past few months. Um, so um, the important thing while we're going through these is to make a note of buildings which for whatever reason really appeal to you um, because at the very end we're going to be asking you to vote for a building other than your own um, and, and that's just we just do that for, for fun really um, when we bring all everyone's buildings together in real life um, you obviously have a chance to chat to uh, the, the creators of the building and find out a little bit more but we thought we would we would still do it today because we like to leave it up to you rather than our experts to work out which building should we have in our future city of tomorrow so Dallas. Okay, well, category one, it's a big one. It's the residential buildings, okay? So let's, I think we should just steam in and have a look at these and then our experts can make a few comments afterwards. So here we go, residential buildings. Mm -hmm. 
This is my countryside villa. It has a dumpling, a silver doorbell, and has all the rooms on the on the down and downstairs. And you go up the stairs, and it has an open terrace and a swimming pool. Here is my dream house. It is self-sufficient as well as helps to tackle many global and local issues. The car park has electric car charging points. Gym has VR goggles to, Im to imitate exercising in multiple environments. The meditation room has screen walls and speakers to simulate being in a relaxing environment. The lounge is a room where the whole family can enjoy some quality time with all the smart apps. It includes a slide from the bedroom for the children. The greenhouse on the room is used to grow fruits and vegetables for the family. Hi, my name is Sarah and I have designed a house for a hot country where you cannot play outside in the summer. The garden room can be part of the house with moving glass walls that can close when it's too hot. Kind, care and family friendly. When you, the colours give you good vibes and makes you feel make you feel happy also when you step in the house it detects if you have any flu or like it detects if you have any cough flu and stuff hi i'm rose and i made the house vent for it is a self-powered system which draws an air through a vent and heats or cools it filtering out the germs clean warm or cool air is then ventilated into the house My name is Daniel and my treetop house can be built amongst the trees to limit deforestation and it also can have fruit and veg growing up the sides of it. In the winter when it rains this building soaks up all the water and in the hot weather it uses the water to cool down the building. This building also has solar panels and is designed like stairs so there are small apartments going upwards and an open rooftop. This is my eco house. I have used renewable energy sources, solar panels, thermal panels, wind turbine, and a rainwater harvester. Thank you for listening. My building is called the Infinity House. As you can see, there is an infinity pool at the top, and the pool water goes through a water mill to produce power for the house, and then through a filtration process to be heated in an underground tank. This house is great because of its underground natural insulation, light streaming in from above, and the space for solar panels and green space, all while being practically invisible from onlookers. Fold walls help us to be an adaptable, comfortable, and eco-friendly home. My building is a two-story house and is called City View. Inside the walls, there is fuel to help insulate the house and solar panels on the roof to help create renewable energy. Inside, there is a small elevator that makes the house more modern. Brilliant. So those are our buildings for the residential category. Uh, Richard and Louise have been looking at these. What, what did you think of our, our category this morning? Uh, Louise, I'll come to you first. Well, I think it's amazing for such a big category, and there were also residential buildings in some of the other categories, Every single one is so unique and really, I think, brings through the personality of the designer. And I think something that's really fantastic is the ambition in all of them to try and make our homes more sustainable and healthier as well, which I think is, you know, obviously very important at the moment. And but what I really enjoyed the most is the thinking about the shapes of the buildings, the materials, the decoration and the furnishing, because I think that's what really makes a building into a home that feels like somewhere that people want to live. And I thought that was really amazing. Absolutely. And Richard, what impressed you the most about our residential buildings? Uh, well, what impressed me the most of it was the, the, I think, the tenacity and the creativity in actually just building some of those models. I mean, some of them are fantastic. I and mean, we've, we've seen some huge uh, sort of projects going on. And yeah, that just shows it. But yeah. The, the creativity as well, thinking about not just sort of the, the renewable energy sources, but how we can actually just make things more efficient and, and trap heat into our homes rather than let it out. So, yeah, some really great thoughts there. And the one with the water mill on the side, I mean, that just that just blew me away. That was fantastic. 
Brilliant. Thank you so much. We'll, we'll come back and speak to you um, again shortly. And then back to Maggie and Dallas. Yeah, so we're going to take a look at outside space next. Um, I think the last few months have really um, brought home to us how important outside space is, whether it is space which is linked to your building, whether it is a park, whether it is on, on top of your building. But that idea that somehow you need to be able to connect with nature uh, at, a, at, a at times when you're feeling really quite vulnerable i think as you know we've all seen just how important that is haven't we dallas absolutely you know i mean I'm, I'm very very lucky i've got a i don't have a big garden but i've got a little patio and it's been an absolute lifesaver my patio which before that we had the lockdown i hadn't really paid much attention to it but it's suddenly become incredibly important in my life and also it's become a great creative space as well now i've got really into planting and bird watching and thinking about uh, just that little little area that i have that i can call mine it's been great i'm very I'm much looking forward to seeing your uh, your um uh, and i hope you can see me by the way my internet died i'm on 4g so i might be a bit um uh, not very clear yeah no we've got you we've certainly got you. okay yeah let's take a look at your brilliant ideas for outside space mm -hmm. Mushroom Manor has a roof designed to rotate and follow the sun for electricity, water and plant growth. The roof also has built-in water purification systems and skylight windows. It is also self-sustainable as it grows its own food. As well as this, it is biodegradable as the walls are made out of fungi-based materials. I'm Ada and this is my building called Pantalope Heavens. It is a flat for 100 people and there is still a lot of space for outdoors as there is a massive recreation area at the top. It takes up more space than the whole area of the building. It also uses renewable energy and an ecological sewage system. Hello, my name is Allegra. And I'm Nicole. We are the engineers for the Village in the Sky. Our village helps the environment. The village is also kind to people, the young, the old and the disabled. Dear Sophia, it features a natural water vertical pool that I will be using for the toilets of the building thanks to gravity. The water is also used to spray the walls on hot days. On the south face, um, maximizing sunlight, it has a vertical garden where my plants can grow and it looks amazing. Brilliant. So some great outside space buildings, lots of buildings there sort of with dedicated rooftop gardens. Um, Adrian, what did you think of our, of our outside space buildings? Well, first of all, I must say they were four outstanding projects. Uh, I could clearly see myself living in them and would love to live in <laughs> one of these in the future. Um, <laughs> And this is in a large part due to the amazing creativity and design that was also translated into the amazing models. Um, so I think they were amazing. And there were lots of concepts that I really liked, such as uh, limiting the footprint of a building and really maximizing the roof mm -hmm. and uh, the sides of the building. I thought that was great. It makes it self-sufficient and um, it also uh, increases um, well-being and all that which is really important, but also creating a place that's fit for all, all generations. And it's something I find really important. And lastly, all the designs really captured the benefit of um, how a design can change the way we live. So I thought the projects were absolutely amazing. Brilliant. Thank you. And how about you, Lucy? Yeah, the same for me, really. The creativity was amazing and really blew me away. Um, I particularly like um, maximising the use of all of the space and really thinking about the communities and how they would use all of the buildings. Um, the, the ideas were great. And I think really if we capture that and the robotics as well, very future thinking and really, really bang on trend for the moment as well. Brilliant. Thank you both um, so much. And also we had our first socially distanced presentation of the morning as well. And I remember sort of, especially early on, students working remotely from different homes on their projects um amazing some, some lovely comments um from the students as well e francois and his friends uh, are watching 
uh, in Enfield. Umar from Leicester, really impressive building so far, many great innovative features. He liked the Infinity House uh, the best. Kimea from London, great buildings, loved the, the Sweat House and Lizzie's House, and Mushroom Man is excellent, says, says Kimea too. Yeah. I thought they were absolutely brilliant. Brilliant and fantastic modelling as well. You guys just doing some amazing stuff with things you found lying around the house. Great videos. Absolutely terrific. Yeah, and, and the models really do bring the ideas to life. Mm. And, 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 and the videos um, are absolutely spot on. It's not easy yeah. to sum an idea up in 15 seconds. So <laughs> We're going to take a look now at your ideas for transport. So uh, this category enables you to take a look at um, it might be an airport, might be a rail station. Um, it might be something very visionary for the future. So um, let's have a look at the ideas that you felt were really important. Mm -hmm. This is Aquafly, my airports of the future. Built out at sea, the runway sits above the ocean, powered by hydropower from the sea through these large vents. My building is a low profile eco building with a living roof to accommodate a drone transport hub, which will make transport more efficient and environmentally friendly, as well as fast and affordable and accessible to all. A city which has plants powered by solar and wind and buildings with green and solar panels that move towards the sun on roofs. This city has an app which you can call the pods to get wherever you want to go. This is a teleportation box. If you're in teleportation box A1 and you need to get to A2, you simply go inside, sit in the seat, strap yourself in and say, take me to teleportation box A2. This is a satellite to help and this is a solar panel, which is its energy source. You open it up and you can see the person just goes in and they'll be taken straight to number two, to teleportation box number two, as soon as they say it. That you just strap yourself into the seat there. My name is Ollie and this is TPB, the future of tomorrow today. This is a garage with a twist as it has electric flying cars and the whole building is powered by electricity which makes the cars eco-friendly and you can charge your cars from the building. This helps to make the environment more clean and not polluted. Brilliant, so some great ideas about how we might be uh, using transport in the future, especially sort of during lockdown, we were talking about how we might, people not wanting to fly, could we come up with something uh, inventive around that? Some, some great ideas there. Uh, Richard, what did you think of the, the transport buildings? Oh, they were brilliant. I mean, there was a wonderful level of creativity. I mean, obviously the airport and the, the drone hangar was, uh, was, was uh, drew my attention particularly, but yeah, I mean, and also Neil's eco city, to go to the whole trouble of designing a city, I just thought the ambition <laughs> was wonderful. So, so, so well done to everyone there and some, some beautifully creative ideas. Brilliant. Thank you. And, and Louise, what did you think? Yeah, I thought there were some really exciting suggestions. We will need some big changes in transport and to see this sort of level of innovative thinking happening is really, really positive and I think it can make us all excited for the future. Brilliant, thank you. And Leona from London uh, says, well done everyone, these buildings are incredible. Yeah, they really are exciting. Uh, Louise is spot on when she uh, you know, says that because um, it, it, it stimulates all sorts of thinking. Um, and yeah, so thank you very much. And the other thing which is really noticeable is the effort that you've gone to in creating your buildings. Uh, they, you, you've used you know, whatever happens to be lying around the house. I mean, and that is actually the, the rule of Team Tech City of tomorrow, that you have to use recyclable materials. And uh, if you buy anything, it mustn't cost more than £10. And so I mean, it's been incredible to see what you've been able to build. I mean, very impressive, Dallas. 
which segues us beautifully into our next category, which is all about construction, the very foundations of building. So let's have a little look at the construction category. Hello, this is my design for the city of Toronto, the Bunker 3000. It can be a house, flats or even offices. It is built into either man-made hillsides or existing ones. It has solar windows or water tank, so it is totally self-sufficient and environmentally friendly. It is good. It is also good for mental health. Hi, my name's Chloe and this is the city volcano. It's a leisure centre. The building has a mountain bike trail on the outside. Solar panels help make energy for the whole building. Most of the outside is environmentally friendly because it has lots of bushes and flowers which helps air pollution. Swimming pool is small, but there is a big current, so it is endless. Everyone in the pool wears augmented reality goggles, so you can get better at swimming by swimming with sharks, turtles or dolphins. Even babies can do this. This is my eco home called Eco Dwell and it's revolved around it being carbon neutral. The main features are that it's built on stilts, it has solar panels and wind turbines which enhance natural energy, it has a conservatory, five folding doors, and a system that collects rainwater and stores it. Thanks for watching. As you can see, it's got solar panel leaves so that we can use it for the lights and to heat, to use as electricity. We've also got a green roof and the excess water from the green roof goes down into, into this water tank and when it's summer, you can take out the water and water the plants with it. Hi, my name is Elwood. I am nine years old. The Crown is a leisure facility that uses natural resources to supply power, reuse water and assist in physical training. It reduces footprint and national grid usage. This is a picture of it. It has four levels and you go up and down with slides and stairs. This is a picture of the model I created. It will be enclosed with glass so you can see the fishes on the outside and this is why I called it the fishbowl house. This is my building the porthole. It has porthole-like windows as that is where it gets its name from. It has solar panels and vegetation as it is a green building. It is also a job discovery lab. Coming back to its windows, there are inspirational messages on them about protecting our earth. Our building is called the Pyramid House. It has an invisible dome covering it that protects it from bad weather. There are tubes that carry food and water into the house. The Rakeen is a mix between a rocket and a submarine. Hello, this is the Vico building. V means Victor, which is my name, and Eco, because it's eco-friendly. This building is a multi-purpose building and it is relaxing. But it's a lots of different buildings wow. and lots of different categories. Wow. <laughs> uh, but these Amazing. were the buildings that the Team Tech team thought were the best constructed models uh, that, we, that we've had submitted. Um, Adrian, what, what did you think of those? Well, I must say the construction projects were absolutely amazing. Um, the models looked like they were done by paid professionals, to be quite honest. Uh, whether it was a multi-purpose building, the spa, the augmented swimming pool, the sport complex, or the underwater apartment, I was, I just wanted to shrink into like a Lego size to be able to, to enjoy those spaces, you know? Um, and that, that, that's what's amazing about having ideas. Um, the key points in all the designs was the environment, there be 
them being environmentally sustainable buildings in terms of solar and water and then what all that can do but as but as well as incorporating it with well-being and the way that they link the two in complete harmony i think was quite magical with all these projects uh, with with ideas and the determination i would love to have you all uh, with me to uh, make the world a better place basically so i hope you you continue your, your ideas i mean that sounds like a job offer that's that's oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah prepare for a call from atkins <laughs> brilliant and, and lucy what did you think of those those models they were amazing and I really hope that our future does look like that and that we take some of the, uh, the innovations that they've used and the creativity to actually build these designs because I mean the volcano one with the track going around the outside that would be brilliant for people in the workplace as well to go to at lunchtime and go up and down the building. Yeah. Um, the use of augmented reality really excites me um, and also I just love the consideration to the environment and how everything was so light so bright and so sustainable as well so it was great, great, great job, everyone. Brilliant, great job. And we, oh. we've, we've had a message through from a very happy grandmother from Stevenage saying, <laughs> thank you, Team Tech. It was so special to be able to see and hear expert feedback on my granddaughter's amazing work and the incredible designs of the other children. The future is in great hands. Thank you for making my day so bright. Yeah, no, I, I, and, you know, all of ours. Hello, Dallas has got his book out. Oh. Well, I was just thinking I, there was a fantastic one I liked, which was a pyramid house, which I thought was terrific. And I, funnily enough, I'd just been reading all about pyramid construction. So great minds think alike. <laughs> I've got to say, all our experts who work with these companies like Atkins and BT, honestly, you've got a whole great workforce of fantastic minds ready to join you. So there you go. Look at them all. You yeah. can <laughs> yeah, I know. stream right. off with all this wonderful talent. Yep, they're, they're making note of names. It's a, it's, a, it's absolutely a talent spotting exercise, um, you know, because your, your thoughts are just so fresh and so vibrant. And also just thinking about so many different things simultaneously. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I really love it. And um, one of our categories is quite interesting because at one time a, a building was kind of what it said on the tin. So if it was an office, it was an office. If it was a home, it was a home. If it was a railway station, it was a railway station. Um, but increasingly, we're looking at how can we have spaces which are much more versatile, spaces which can be many different things at the same time. Um, and that obviously means that we make better use of a building uh, and also that the people working within a building could perhaps have better experiences. So this sort of takes us into our multi-purpose building category. Let's have a look at the videos. My name is Uma. My building grows food in the roof farm to reduce food miles and pollution adapts its temperature according to the weather and has a network of solar powered pods underground. Thank you for listening. My building design is special because it provides a multi-generational living. It focuses on the issue of energy demand, working from home, childcare, changes in technology and weather, as well as water usage and waste. My house has been inspired by trees and how it adapts to the nature around them and maximizes all the source of light, air and wind to generate the electricity around. This is the Pyford Stilts, raised off the ground with rows beneath to eliminate use of land mass. It has reusable energy with its east-west facing windmills, solar panels and triangular shape to absorb rainwater. There's less travel required since the flats are beside the offices. Finally, there are gardens surrounding to attract the community. Hi, I'm Niall and I've made a multi-functioning building with living space, offices and a farm. And it's eco-friendly.
Hello, I am Mohammed and and I have built a city called Moville. I am very proud of it because it has it is very organized and you know where to go because there's a little map. This is the palm tree garden. It has a full blown garden on top of its roof and there are also classrooms for growing your own produce. There's also an elevator to move floors. Welcome to the tall alien tower. This tower powers and funds itself. In it you'll find 328 floors, anti-gravity sports pods, a luxury hotel, a green deck and wooden relaxing deck, and awesome eco-friendly features. This is our five-storey house. It's a community building so everyone can access it. It has a shopping centre, childcare, a cinema, a skate park, a homeless shelter, futuristic library, and an outdoor seating area and swimming pool. Really, so again, another amazing mix um, of buildings. And we love these sort of multi-purpose buildings because it means people don't have to travel so far to get to, to, to work or, or to leisure centres. We have anti-gravity parks. Um, incredible. Richard, what, did, what was your standouts? Uh, well, I mean, uh, there was Umar's building there because what I really liked about that is he took into account food miles. So yes, our, our food needs to get from where it's grown or, or produced to where we are but he sort of said well, well just do it in the same place so again it's that sort of that kind of whole system thinking that i, I really appreciate and i thought it was really clever and, and again the level of details in the modeling is just fantastic it absolutely blows my mind <laughs> so uh, i mean i think niles the block that was wonderful and um, one of the things we promote a lot at work is it, we call it design thinking. And one of the cornerstones of that is prototyping and testing your prototypes. And I think we've got a lot of people who are well on the way to being great design thinkers if they put their mind to it. Brilliant. Thank you. And Louise, what, what impressed you most about this category? Well, I have to say I loved this category. I thought it was so interesting. I love that. I think without fail, every single project uh, was thinking about green space and gardens or trees and how that might contribute to a healthy and a happier sort of city. And I think they really thought about what people need from the spaces they inhabit. And I think actually what I found most exciting is that buildings like this would help contribute to a really diverse city. So many different uses side by side. And I just, I thought it was wonderful. Brilliant, thank you. And loads, loads and loads of lovely comments coming in uh, from the students. Uh, Kimea really liked Chloe's building, the tech tree and the V Eco, the Vico building. Also mentioned a building from Transport, but couldn't remember the name, and that was Eco City by Neil uh, in Bristol. Allegra from Folkestone says they're all amazing. Um, some lovely comments. Um, Eloise in London, the construction models are absolutely amazing. Love all the innovative ideas. Well done to everyone. Yeah, yeah, absolutely brilliant. I totally, I totally agree. Actually, it kind of leads us quite nicely, Maggie, onto our onto our next uh, category. You know, we're talking a lot there about sort of green spaces and the the designers of the future, people who are building buildings of the future and cities of the future, are going to have to really, really think about that holistic approach to building, thinking about the environment, thinking about working with nature. And our next category is all about buildings that are very specifically environmentally friendly. This is the butterfly house. The moss on the top absorbs air pollution and sound, making it a quieter and nicer place to live. It also attracts wildlife, which makes it eco-friendly. And inside there is a dome full of plants, butterflies and vines. This is the home of Second Chances, recycled from two shipping containers clad in sustainable wood. Here, even the rainwater has a second chance at being useful. It runs down the solar panel, which supplies electricity. It then goes into a tank with water and purifying fish, which waters the crops and feeds the shelter. It has places for homeless people to enjoy themselves, eat and rest in sleeping pods. It is urgent that we address environmental problems on our planet. 
This futuristic house is designed to be self-sufficient and carbon negative, with planted walls and roofs, a rainwater harvesting system, and a renewable green energy production. It sits above ground to address the risk of flooding. The greenhouse is self-sufficient and uses green energy. Features such as a space enlarging roof, earthquake and flood detection, hydraulic feet, and iris activated security system make it smart and safe. While the self-cleaning pool and Chinese evergreen wall make it kind of cheer its environment, community and your occupants. In designing my house of the future, I have sought to address an important issue facing the planet, which is lack of space due to increasing population. My house has a novel space saving system to help reduce its size while maintaining comfort for its occupants and it also has innovations that are environmentally friendly and make the house self-sufficient. Hello, this is my eco house. It addresses an increased need for housing and saving water and energy. Um, there is plenty of natural light. It helps ease and promotes mental well-being. Also, there is much use of technology and AI. The Energizer. The four water towers collect water. Half is used to power the central tower and half is used to irrigate the land to grow vegetables and herbs. The main tower is our cooking centre where children learn how to cook with the vegetables. The Energizer. An eco-friendly cooking centre. The Flower Hall of the Future is an eco-build for education, business or leisure. It has a number of environmentally friendly ideas in the design and materials, including harnessing wind power effectively. This is my underwater greenhouse. The greenhouse is a pods built on the side of underwater cliffs. It's powered by a water wheel, which is powered by the sea. A purification tank is included to recycle seawater so it can be used for other purposes. The Windhouse 360 has solar panels and a windmill so that the house can either use wind power or solar energy to generate electricity. I think that by having two options makes it easier to rely on one. So, this is a rubbish extracting boat which takes out all of the litter in the oceans and lakes. So the boat has solar domes for electric engine power which is eco-friendly and sucks in all of the litter with vacuum into, into filters and then the people on deck are helping recycle. Then all of the rubbish gets sent into a into a, a bin factory in, into separate bins and then we get clean oceans and local lanes. Thank you. Brilliant. There's some great ideas there for green buildings for the future. Uh, Lucy, what are your thoughts on this category? Um, I love this. Um, within the workplace, we actually are focused on human centred design and seeing the communities being um, thought about as well as the actual environmental use, I think for me was brilliant. Um, when you think about you've got air polluting, absorbing moss, you've got rainwater filtrations, you've got hydraulics. Absolutely love the iris activated security systems. Mm. I think that's just really key going forward. Um, but for me, I, I loved um, the rubbish extracting the boat. I think that was absolutely such an innovative idea and it really addresses a life problem that we have at the moment. So well done to everyone that's done these. Great. Brilliant. Thank you. And Adrian, we, we did a, an innovation day all about thinking about the environment. So you must have loved some of these buildings. Yeah, I, I, I really loved. I thought all the environmentally friendly projects were quite, um, they, bl they blew my mind, basically. Um, the way that and there are all this creativity intertwined with amazing problem solving skills really made me think and step back and ask myself if I myself was getting a little bit bore, boring in my ideas. So I think that's really good. Uh, you, all the projects showed that we don't use nature um, as well as we could um, because there's endless numbers of ways which we could use nature and, and then also 
numbers, endless number of benefits. Um, all the projects captured the essence that the environment is our friend. And if we respect it and truly live with it, we can truly make our lives a place of dreams. And so please do not stop designing and problem solving as you all can make the world we live in uh, a better place and a lovely one. Thank you. And uh, Moise from London is loving every single one of these buildings. Josh and Jacob are really appreciating that a lot of buildings are using Lego in there to sort of give us a sense of scale, which I thought was, um, I agree with that. So that's nice to see. Yeah. I, I, and, um, I, you know, the, the important thing is we, we, we really will give you every which kind of help so that you can keep on uh, generating ideas, whether you want to generate more ideas for buildings, whether you want to uh, build certain pieces of technology. Uh, we've got some really exciting sessions coming up over the summer months and we'll we'll tell you about those a little bit later on. But we move on now to the health and well-being category. And this is really interesting because when you're thinking about, say, a hospital of the future, how are you going to design it? What will be the key drivers? I mean, at the moment, the way that hospitals are thinking about their buildings is to some extent being driven by the virus. Or are you going to think about how you could make a hospital more patient centered? Or will it be about making people who work within the hospital feel better? Let's take a look at your ideas. My building has lots of interesting parts. For example, the face of the hospital, which moves depending on the season, a water system that collects rainwater, and gardens so patients and doctors are connected to nature. Hey Team Tech, this is a wellbeing park with waterfalls, a wellbeing hub, a spa and cafe, swimming pools, exercise, yoga and picnic areas, allotments, wildflower meadows, and it is designed for children with learning difficulties. This is the Maglev Transportation Hospital, where we focus on having a quick response to patients and to be as eco-friendly as possible, with solar panels to power the building. We also have biomimicry vines which share the pipes for the pool. One. This is my eco hospital, so I have a helicopter landing pad with a sky bridge to a ward with beds in here, then a rooftop garden up here um, where people can walk around solar panels on the slanted roof so we can catch water under this tube. There's a reception desk and cafe down there. Um, we have robots as well um, around the building to help and uh, ambulance hangar there. Hi, my name is Oliver and I designed the Health First House. There is a virus detector on entry, meaning that anybody who goes in will be scanned and advised if they have an illness, which they can get it treated on the on-site hospital with accommodation for their family at the hotel. The hotel is environmentally friendly, being powered by stored seismic energy and solar panels. Amazing. And for this category, we've got some very special feedback for you. So we've got a couple of experts from the Royal National Orthopaedic Hospital who took a look at your buildings. Judging headquarters. Very messy. We can certainly do with a new hospital. Research at the Royal National Orthopaedic, and I'm here with I'm Deirdre, and I'm a clinical research practitioner at the Royal National Orthopaedic in Stanmore. We were really impressed with the designs of the hospital that we have received. Gosh, and I'm looking forward to seeing something like this in the future. So good luck. Some great feedback there, and, and the experts said after seeing those buildings, uh, they would like a new hospital. So, um, <laughs> well done. I think they've just got a new wing there, actually. <laughs> um, but those, there were some fantastic ideas. I, I, I really love the way you thought about how important it would be for um, the people working within a hospital to have a, a connection with with nature in some way. I thought that was a a lovely idea um, and you know the biomimicry being used um, thinking about people with learning difficulties 
Very impressive, Dallas. Really good. I actually, I, I was particularly keen on the maglev hospital, uh, which was designed in Minecraft. I thought that was amazing. Basically, anything with a maglev in, I, I'm sold. I think that that's absolutely brilliant. Um, but it takes us our next category is is sort of connected to that. It's to do with, well, in a way that um, a lot of you people who who have been off school recently uh, will have had an opportunity to to think well. How do schools actually work? How would my school perhaps be designed better if I was in charge? How can we think about the whole process of education? And so I'm really, really interested to see what ideas uh, you guys have come up with, particularly if you've had a lot of time off school. Hello, my name's Harry. I'm going to tell you about my building, which is called the Ocean Research Centre. This is a building with rooms above and below sea level for scientists and visiting groups to live, sleep and work. It also has outdoor green spaces for residents and seabird nesters. It's a plan that the ORC should be self-sufficient in energy and fresh water. Nearby, I can sink into place using balance tanks and anchors. It is hoped that sci scientists can use the building to find out more about what we do to our seas. It may also help to rehabilitate injured sea creatures. I hope you like my building. Thank you for listening. I have designed and made a building called the Upcycling Ark. This is a creative space that encourages people to stop buying clothes and to learn how to upcycle them. It has workshops for all ages and spaces for people to sell their work. The Ark is solar powered and will glow at night, showing off the sculptures made from recycled flip-flops and the community gardens. This is a place where people come together. This is my Wilma School. It is a school for students from nursery to uni to reduce travel and help with pollution. The school electricity is powered by windmills to make it more eco-friendly. Amazing, and for this category, we showed your projects to Ruth, uh, who is a professor at the University of Roehampton, and she's got this feedback for you. Hello everyone, my name is Ruth Seabrook and I'm going to be giving some feedback on the education category. So first up is Harry with his Ocean Research Centre. I really like the way the centre is both above and below sea level and the way you've very clearly shown that uh, with the colours and the use of these areas for both scientists and for the wildlife uh, in the sea. I love your video as it shows how large your structure is, it doesn't come across in the picture. Uh, and it's great that you were thinking about how its uh, energy Im will impact on, on the earth and how it can be self-sufficient and therefore create its own energy. I really like the added outside areas for residents to use and the seabirds to nest on, great. Well done, Harry, uh, a really uh, necessary resource for the future. So on to Florence's, the upcycling arc, a very beautiful building, very well designed. I really like your development drawings. There's really excellent annotation and your illustrations are really, really good. Um, your building is very funky and I really like the way that it encourages people to upcycle their clothes instead of buying new ones, as well as furniture and, and other belongings. Um, great community feel. Um, the gardens for allowing veg growing, another absolutely excellent idea. Um, it's great that you've got it solar powered and I love the idea that it's going to glow at night and that you're going to see all these wonderful sculptures that will really um, bring people into, um, into the gardens. Uh, and then lastly on to Louis um, and his inspirational windmill school. Uh, I like the idea of keeping the community together so there's less travel and obviously that's been you know very current at the moment with the, the lockdown. I really would like all schools to have big open spaces and that's what you've said you'd like, veggie patches and community gardens. Um, so I think that's a really wonderful idea to try and get the community back together and doing things um, with each other. I think it's a great idea. So well done Louis on your windmill school. 
brilliant some some lovely feedback there and lots of comments coming in uh from the students as well frankie in liverpool loves the mushroom manor like the design and loved how the garden uh is on the roof chloe from alcester loved the rubbish recycling boat umar from leicester sent a message just saying thank you so much for this opportunity it's been inspirational he's been interested in iconic buildings since he was two years old so he's been fascinating seeing all of the designs uh this Me morning too. And then Allegra from Folkestone just loved the Minecraft design that really showed some skill. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, there, there's something magical and powerful about every single one of the buildings that we're, we're showcasing today. Um, hey Maggie, I should ask, let me just ask you, it's quite interesting how this virus, you know, and the, the situation we find ourselves in has really made us think differently, hasn't it? It's made us think in, in a way much more creatively about our environment. Yeah, and, and I, I, it's made us think about what really matters. Um, uh, it's shone a light on how we absolutely have to do things differently, um, not just because of the virus, but be, just because we could make our communities so much better. And we've, we've seen how certain things um, have made a real difference. And, you know, whether it is access to local parks, whether it is buildings which are designed so that it's easier to work at home, for instance, um, all, all of those sorts of things. But most of all, the, just that feeling of just a little bit more kindness floating around is, a, is generally a very good plan. And I, and I think that is what shines through in all of these buildings you know, the, the, the way you've really thought about them. And the, the next category, business and retail, um, there's quite a lot of press at the moment about how certain um, retail companies um, are restructuring. And I wonder if you've got any ideas for how the retail sector might really appeal to young people. A revolutionary feature of my dealership is the VR test track, which allows you to test the cars virtually, reducing traffic and pollution while providing a place for driving tests and motorsport practice. The Cake Lab is designed to use renewable energy to power all the machines and robots. On your phone, you can order and customise your cake to make sure if you have allergies, you do not use that ingredient. Hello, my name is Yuan and I present Eco Offices. Eco Offices has multiple uses such as offices, a place for the less fortunate and a sanctuary for people with mental health issues. Eco Offices is run off solar energy, ground source heating and purified rainwater. Thank you for listening. We designed this marvellous hotel for your perfect summer getaway. The sustainable guest house is used in the natural elements to power the hotel. No greenhouse gases are ever used. The conserved water and energy is reused from the hotel, which comes from a natural available environment. <laughs> Brilliant. And Richard and Louise, you both took a look at, at this category. Louise, what, what impressed you the most? Well, I thought that there was actually a really different way of thinking about business and retail in these designs and actually really a lot more caring about the environment and about the people that use them. And I think they really, what I love was how they considered the impact of these buildings on others and the kind of personal needs of individuals and providing spaces for people in need as well. I thought that was really, really commendable. Brilliant, thank you. And, and same question, Richard, what, what impressed you the most? Uh, the, the cake lab, um, I, I was sort of taken straight away. I saw that, yes, uh, I really like the idea of a cake lab. Um, so <laughs> I'll, I'll be going there in the future, but no. And, and again, uh, things like the Eco Hotel, I think, you know, uh, people would want to go there people would want to experience eco living so you know I, I i think they all are wonderful they all have their own merits the ar dealership yeah why not take a, a test drive virtually you don't need to get in the car use the virtual reality and yeah the eco offices i wish my <clears throat> excuse me i wish my office was like that it was fantastic 
Brilliant. Uh, great job. Yeah, a little bit of love for the um, the, the Cape Lab also from Allegra um, at Folkestone. And then Kamea from London again, the, the Eco offices uh, stood out too. So there's some amazing ideas um, in that category. And then just really quickly, Kitty from Muswell Hill <laughs> says, Florence's project is amazing. Lots of love, Kitty, and hi, Bear. <laughs> yay, yay for cake lab <laughs> yeah, it's making me feel hungry <laughs> yeah. yeah well actually from from cake lab that segues us ni nicely onto our next category uh, because the other important thing about living in buildings living in cities is that we need to exercise we can't just be sitting around all day and so our next category are buildings with that in mind buildings that really focus on sport and recreation We are Sophie and Olivia, creators of the Besties Leisure Centre. Its biggest benefit is that it's powered by the gym. And it also keeps you fit and healthy and helps you make friends. Hope, Hope you like our building. building. Bye! I have made the swimming pools and also the gym and the fun area where children can play. How do people arrive? They arrive from the drone up here. When you're finished, this dryer will dry all your clothes until you find it comfortable. We also have a, wel a nice welcome person here. I call him Steve. If there's any other gl global pandemic, um, I hope people will try and make this idea as realistic as possible. This building is called The Market by Max and Zach. It is controlled using virtual reality technology and is a futuristic building which flies to different locations. You can do lots of things in it like shop, play, football, tennis, swimming, slides, relax and watch TV. The Quad Pod is a high-rise living space with four virtual reality exercise pods. Use the pods to exercise anywhere in the world. Whilst exercising, know that the rooftop bee garden is helping the environment and feel proud that your exercise is linked to a generator adding power to your living space. The Quad Pod, perfect for inner city living. Our idea uses futuristic VR to transport people virtually from small and local venues to large sporting events. Everyone can attend and get the best seat in the house without the reversal of their rooms. Excess seating could be transformed into housing. Amazing. I went from wanting to eat cake with the last round to actually wanting to go out and do some exercise after watching, after watching those. Um, Lucy, what impressed you most about the category? Wow, everything, to be honest. I mean, to think that we could be using things like this in the future. I mean, the, the market that flew and landed somewhere else, there was absolutely no excuse for anyone to do any exercise or anything in the future, is there really? Um, I think as well for me, it was, again, it's that use of virtual reality. Um, I loved the fact that, um, I can't remember who it was now, I think it was Eve that had done the, he based it on David Lloyd of the future. So it's great that he's using something now and thinking about how it would look in the future with the um, sanitised pipes and everything to think about COVID or any other viruses. So I, I think it was absolutely brilliant, just the innovative use of everything around them. I love the idea of that one, being able to get out the pool and just sort of be sucked up a tube and dry. Wow, <laughs> how amazing would that be? Brilliant. How about you, Adrian? Well, just like Lucy, I love uh, all the ingenuity um, in this project. Being a sports enthusiast like myself, I must admit I was very excited about this category and I must say I was not disappointed. Um, all the teams and projects emphasize how sport, whether you are partaking or watching it at, um, at any level, creates a sense of community and this is something I think we need to work on and, and get back. And so I really like all those ideas. A couple of the teams had the great idea of converting energy consumed by our bodies while doing sports and converting it to electricity, which mm -hmm. I think is a great idea because that's the essence of what we do is converting energy because it can only it cannot be destroyed but only um, changed. Yeah. And um, 
Sorry. <laughs> I got lost in my notes. Um, and uh, fo following the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, all your ideas have great significance as people uh, appreciate the importance of sports. And you can see how sports has become a, 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 a important aspect in our daily lives. For example, I went um, to my uh, local sports shops, which uh, it's, for example, the biggest decathlon in the world, and they ran out of bicycles last month just because suddenly people wanted to start cycling because they've seen how important it is. So I can't wait to see most of your ideas, well, all your ideas, and I hope all of them actually come to, to fruition because I think it will make the world a better place. Brilliant. Thank you. We, we've had lots of schools and groups taking part uh, in the competition at home. Um, and one group was uh, Southport Guides, 14 Southport Guides, and their leader has just sent through um, a message, Lynn, saying, just wanted to say, I'm so proud of my guides who are taking part in this project. Big well done to everyone. Your thoughtfulness is amazing and proves that we can be optimistic about the cities of tomorrow. Absolutely. Um, optimistic and creative and I, I, I think something that you just can't fail to miss is the level of innovation behind all of the buildings. So the next category reflects that. So these are the most innovative buildings. <laughs> heard of stem cell engineering. If you have, wouldn't it be amazing if you could make your own house with it? I'm Nathan, age 11, and I've just done just that with my bio house. Hi, my name is Eden, and my multi-purpose building is for rehabilitation for people, healthcare, rescue and farming. It is also in a post-apocalyptic flood, so partly underwater. This is Robo Water. He's solar panel and he picks up dirty water and then he makes it into clean water with a water filtration system. Hello, my name is Danchi and this is my environment friendly quarantine house. It is special because it has a playground indoors, a robot to help you and also it uses solar panels and wind turbines to generate electricity. Hi, I'm Jacob and back in April I joined Team Tech with my floating forest. You can now see it as a model. The special thing about the floating forest is it's actually a drone. Underneath the drone is a large 3D printer that can be used for restoring trees. On the top of the drone is lots of forest area. The research team here can pick out certain bits of the forest area and plant them as and when needed. Thank you. Hello, this is the Great Building and I think it's the building of the future. The reason why it's called the Great Building is because of these pods which make it look like grapes. They're mixed use and you can add more over time. There's a reservoir which stores up rainwater, goes down the tube and rotates this big glass water wheel which, which um, is used to make electricity. The leftover water is used in the toilet. There is a grapevine app which allows people working and living in there to know what is on and you can also download pizza on there. there. There's an underground train system to save space. Um, it is a stunning landmark and I think it is totally awesome. The pyramid is a levitating block of flesh that uses a magnetic field. The building is fully sustainable, recycling water, waste and using wind and solar energy. The way people get in and out of the building is by hopeful crafts that are either public or private. Hello, my name is Carl and this is a transforming lightning building which transforms lightning to energy. There is a long metal spike on top of the building to attract lightning. The building is located in regions which, where lightning strikes more regularly. The inhabitants of the building and nearby cities use the energy as heat and electricity. Hello everyone, my name is Alex and this is my water recycling. 
So water is connected into this large tank where it slides down and hits this wall opposite to bounce back, which creates energy that can be used within a building or a certain area. So whilst we're playing those videos, I can see all of our experts smiling as those presentations and, and buildings uh, came on. So levitating buildings, water-based buildings, robots that clean water, lots of innovative um, ideas. Richard, what did you think of this category? What I really liked about this category was not only was there a really high level of innovation, but it was it was the level of care to the surrounding environment that was was that was evident as well. So it's like, let's have a, a robot that cleans the water. So, you know, it is a positive environmental impact. And I thought that was brilliant. And it was evident in, in everything there. It was wonderful. Brilliant. And, and how about you, Louise? I just think the imagination and the creativity that's gone into some of these designs is extraordinary. Like they're amazing, so unique. And the models in this category, especially, you know, they're all different shapes, they're all different materials and they're just extraordinary. Brilliant, thank you. And Kathy and Tom, who were taking your questions and comments, said that they are smiling uh, too. <laughs> uh, Natasha from London just says, the creativity and incredible range of different ideas is fantastic. Nathaniel from Enfield loves Yves Francois's building uh, for the future. I, I absolutely brilliant. I was just there's another. Uh, I really enjoyed the upside down pyramids the building. building. I was checking in my complete pyramids building, and there was nothing in my pyramid building about upside down <laughs> pyramids. Um, so maybe we could we could write a new chapter in that. Um, really, really good. Oh, you've all frozen. I don't know if you can still see me. Can you? We can hear still me? see you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you can. Okay. Um, uh, right. A lot of what we've been talking about today, we've been talking about this idea of, sort of holistic building, thinking about the environment, thinking about ourselves, thinking about well-being. And our next category is all about that. It's all about kindness, something we need a lot more of. I created the Dementia Village to keep people safe in their own homes and to continue their daily lives. This house is designed with children's needs put first, with spaces for play and exercise. It's designed to be inclusive and wheelchair accessible. It's eco-friendly and makes use of grey water and collected rainwater. Houses can be connected via the gardens so multiple generations can live together whilst also having their own space. Nobody would need to live alone if they didn't want to. This is RS Towers, the rescue centre. This is the living room where you can just have fun. This is the bedroom and the toilet where you can chillax. This is the hostel, people go if they're sick. This is where they get educated. My name is Nathaniel. Welcome to Sandy Recycling Factory of the Future. It was designed to improve recycling, reduce air and water pollution and tackle climate change. It has solar panel roof, drive-in drop-off service, automated extraction door and a staff well-being room. One amazing feature is the special sensors in and around the building to detect unhealthy levels of air quality. Thank you! For the City of Futures design is a mobile pod that goes around big cities rehoming stray animals. It uses clean energy such as solar energy and wind power to move and function. This is the hill house. It's built into a hill so that on stilts so that animals can go under and over it. Birds can fly into the treehouse dining room. All the furniture is recycled and a lollipop and a robot lollipop man makes crossing the road safer. The Horcruxes, a mixed use sustainable building, homeless workspace, waste collection, compost and biomass, living spaces for work for working homeless and building manager, play and party rooms and cinema, an urban garden for growing food. 
I've built um, panels in the road so there's still light to go in and the homeless people can lift up this flat and walk into the okay. shelter. There's a shower and um, some washing stuff and um, a toilet and then there's a stove and an oven and a sink to wash your hands in. Um, I think this could mean that there would be no homeless people who are wet there could be no homeless people who are cold and um, there can be no homeless people and they'll actually have somewhere to cook but also um, the cars will still be able to drive. The Mandala City Hall is a cultural hub including a museum, marketplace and church. It aims to bring nature to the city and includes gardens on each level making it appear like a hill in the middle of a city. There is also an ocean room where the sights and sounds of the sea are projected onto walls for visitors to enjoy. Amazing, lots of lovely ideas around homelessness, around animal welfare, around bringing communities uh, together. Lucy, what impressed you most about this category? I was generally moved by this category. Um, every time we were judging the categories I didn't think we'd possibly be able to get more and more and more but every time I think for me it's the sheer volume of consideration and thought from all of the students that have done these that go in to address some real problems that our communities face. Um, Kira's Dementia Village that really really touched me. Um, I loved the use um, of, of thinking about how real matters are going to affect people going forward and how we can actually build and cater for that in the future. I loved the animal rescue I thought that was great. Um, well, all of them, to be honest, they, they just touched me so much with the level of thought, the consideration for the community, the environment and actually innovation. What innovations and what technology can we actually bring in to make some of the lives of these communities better as well? So um, well done to everyone. Brilliant. Thank you. And, and Adrian, um, what, what impressed you? Well, I, I think uh, Lu Lucy uh, explained it perfectly. It was amazing. It truly was all the ideas. I think I must praise the enthusiasm to problem solve and address people and animals in need was truly inspirational. Uh, we need more altruistic designers and leaders like yourselves. Um, you all touched upon the fact that a space can be used for more than one purpose and I think that's really important. Um, it made me think about this new project that I saw that I really like in Australia where they're turning um, car parks into uh, homeless shelters at night because there's a lot of buildings that we have that are not used for part of the day and that's making use of it um, and I think it's a it's a it made me think that everything and anything we do um, on a daily basis can uh, put a smile put a smile on someone's face and whether they're your loved ones or, or just a stranger in the street and um, and I think that's very important to keep in mind. And all these buildings actually help us make that even easier. So I would love to see these projects uh, come to fruition very quickly. Brilliant. Thank you. And Maggie and Dallas, these, these are buildings that we've seen uh, in schools and on our weekly sessions. It's lovely to see them again. And they've been developed further since we saw them last. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and just that sense, I think, of young people designing concepts where there really is that feeling of, you know, how do we make this connection with the whole community? How do we make what we do, everything we do, better for everyone as opposed to just better for ourselves? Um, you know, and, and I think that altruistic strand shines through just about every single project, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I completely agree. I think it's absolutely amazing. Just I, what, what strikes me every time I see these buildings is just certainly when I was that age, I wasn't thinking about the spaces that we inhabit in quite the same level of detail as these uh, as you guys are today at doing teen tech. It's just astounding how creative you are about thinking about space. Um, our final main category, though, I think is it, <laughs> I've been so looking forward to it um, because it's all about how do we have fun with our spaces? You know, we've thought, talked about the usefulness of the innovation and kindness and all these things, but actually spaces that that are, are, are fun to be in is, is a terrific idea. And so I'm going to be absolutely fascinated to see what you've come up with. So this is all about fun. Yeah, 
better room for sending to you my VR room. The VR room will be a room of strong glass screens and with the technology where you can press a button, choose your destination, where or when, while supercomputer simulates texture and looks using glass um, using glass screens and pistons. This is my Pigeon Palace. It's environmental and has state-of-the-art state technology. It also has houses, offices, laboratories, learning centres uh, and leisure centres. This is, this is all powered by huge solar panels on the wings and who wouldn't want to live in a pigeon? Have fun. Hi, I'm Ellen and this is my colourful technology home. It's got a robot guarding the door and the door has got a voice activation system and it's designed for an extended family and there's a robot here in the greenhouse watching all the time. The end. Welcome to the tree. This is where we're building a community. Enjoy our wellbeing cat cafe. Theatre in the round, our cooking pod, play games in the VR room, and up for learning and discovering in the canopy, and finish the day in our auto stereoscopic cinema. Thanks for visiting the tree. Have you ever thought of bringing the wilderness into the city? I'm Elliot, and I've done just that my wilderness adventure building. This is my Essex Eco School. The drones fly the children to school and there are also robots that welcome them and are in the sea to collect the plastic pollution and also help the children swimming. The children can go down in these tubes and feed the wildlife. Amazing. And Richard and Louisa, I saw you grinning all the way through uh, those projects. <laughs> uh, Louise, which building did you find the most fun? Well, it's hard to ignore the pigeon. <laughs> it's just exceptional and actually uses real pigeon feathers in the modelling. I mean, that was amazing. But I mean, I'd love to visit any of those buildings. They really are fun. And I think the model making again, I mean, you can see that the students have had a lot of fun making these models. None of them uses only one material. There's so many different things that have been used. And they're just fantastic. Brilliant. And, and Richard, did you enjoy those buildings? Yes, uh, immensely. And, and the use of technology in some of those buildings for entertainment, the VR and, and all the uh, renewable sort of energy sources that they've put in as well. I'm, I'm just very worried about the floor. In, in Kitty's house, yes. I mean, the, the, the tree model that she made is stunning, <laughs> taller than her, but I hope the floor's okay. That, that was that was my biggest question, Did was that already there or did they excavate the house in order to, uh, to build their model? So some amazing uh, and some really fun uh, ideas there. Yeah, I know, it's lovely. And it, and it also enables me to crack my poor joke with when we were putting the, the <laughs> most fun building together. I said, oh my God, look at this. I can put the cat amongst the pigeons. Yay. Uh, uh, very good. <laughs> I have a pet pigeon who some, sometimes comes in and out of my house, so he'll be very, very excited. Um, I hope you, I can't see any of you guys because my internet's gone down, so I'm, oh, I'm, I'm using you. my, my yeah. phone. Okay, oh, that's quite know, good. We can, we can anyway, my pet you. pigeon, very excited about the whole thing. Excellent. Um, and now, this is a very difficult thing because uh, we would be very interested to know which building has appealed to you the most. Now, this is really difficult because, you know, I, I'm, and I'm glad I'm not being asked to do this because I don't think I would be capable of doing it. But um, uh, we're going to bring up a form, Ali. Yeah. Um, and what what you you need to do is as you've been going along there would have been some buildings that you thought oh wow i really liked that one um and so you need to let us know which one which one it is um and we've we've put them in categories because we thought that might help you remember so was it some a building that was really early on is it a recent building um and we, we thought we would just do this um because i think uh, it's it's quite interesting to see which buildings the students have absolutely enjoyed. So um, Ali will just, I think the yeah. form is so, just like 
um, load up as yeah, well. Yeah, underneath the video, you can click on the link. Um, I'll put a QR code up on the screen if you're watching on your phone, so you can vote that way. But yeah, you can vote for one, just one uh, building, so your, your favourite building. Um, and we just uh, flash that up for you. We'll give you a couple of minutes um, on that. In the meantime, if you've got any questions or comments for our experts, anything you'd like me to read out about the favourite buildings that you've seen today, uh, which ones did you like the most and why, and we'll read some of those out as well once those results um, come in. Yeah, I, I, and um, I, I know you're, just, you're probably going to leave that QR code up there just for a little while, but um, I, I've got a question I was going to put to um, everyone, actually, our, our, our experts, which is, you know, many of the young people who've taken part in this project, uh, it's absolutely fired up um, uh, a keenness for, you know, working in architecture or building design uh, um, in the future. And so just interested in understanding the kind of things you might recommend that they, they do. Um, you know, I mean, obviously, if you're eight or nine years old, it's a way off. <laughs> but, but there are, you know, it's a quite a competitive area and it, gaining the right kind of skills and experiences is always important, isn't it? Could I maybe answer this? Yeah, absolutely. Give some suggestions. Yeah. I think um, just keep making and drawing that's it's so important as a way to uh describe and communicate your ideas when you're an architect it's absolutely essential and actually if you just keep you know when you find a problem in your home how might you solve it try sketching out some designs sometimes you might try actually making something it might be a bit of furniture but anything all these different scales of things all help learn about how things fit together what materials work what doesn't and I think just explore things like that. Oh, sure. Exploring is a really, really good word. I, I, I've always lived in cities. I've li I live in London at the moment. And what I like to do is just explore my own city. It's very easy when we live somewhere to take everything for granted and to take buildings for granted. And they almost become invisible. And sometimes it's really good just to stop and look at buildings and think about how they've been designed. Maybe think about the history of the building, who, who designed it, perhaps find out a little bit more. So yes, exactly. Exploration is the key. And also just keeping your eyes open and looking around and seeing what's out there already I think is really fun and I, I think um, adding to that I, exploring is the key um, finding problems as Louise said and try to solve them whether it's in your house or whether it's something you experience or you see your relatives experience um, also maybe taking pictures and um, having a, a notepad is a really good idea because um, as I can see, you guys all have great ideas and uh, we forget our ideas. So make sure you record your ideas. That's really important because every day we, we think of things and we forget. Um, and exploring is really important. Um, I've been lucky to live in nine countries so far. And um, every place where I go, I try, for example, when I go on holiday or work in a place just to try to go on the metro and the metro is different in every country for example in egypt you go to the metro and the metro is almost like a supermarket you can buy anything on the metro you can buy a sim card you can buy a phone you can buy a potato peeler you can buy vegetables and it's like well actually that's not a bad idea what what why don't we do we do two things we travel to a place and we get our shopping done so there's lots of ideas that we can um take on from other industries or other circumstances and apply it to different situations. So basically it's your imagination that, that takes you wherever you let it. I think for me as well, it's about being curious and, and never letting that curiosity go. So it's all around unconstrained thinking. So don't be constrained by any parameters around you. Just think big picture and what could you do if you, if you could do anything, what would that be? And always ask questions um, because that all the time you're asking questions, you're learning and you're thinking. Um, so I think they all just form part of the same parcel, really. Yeah, I'll just add, I'll just add to that. It's a uh, yeah. Look at different perspectives as well, and quite often you'll you'll find you're you're you're, con you're constrained by your own thinking. So ask a lot of questions of other people. What do they think? What's their point of view? 
Uh, and yeah, there are all some wonderful shapes in nature. So if you see a nice shape in nature, copy it down and think, well, actually, how could I use that in something? You know, it, <laughs> it, 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 there's a great world out there. Yeah, and as you say, storing up those ideas is really important. <laughs> holding signs up. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a really useful thing to remember is how to be an explorer of the world. I think that's that's the, that's the sort of key. Just uh, you know, enjoying our spaces around us and, and and treating treating it as an adventure. Yeah. Can I just say, Dallas, that you are completely bucking the trend because most people, you know, when they you, you see people on Zoom calls or whatever, they've got like their massive bookcases in the background. <laughs> but you are clearly someone who reads the books. Well, that's the thing. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I think you're exactly right. I think books, you know, they look nice and everyone, you know, it's all you've got to have your bookcase in shot now. But I've gone opposite. My bookcase is behind me. So I can actually reach for books that I love in, in case I need to show to show uh, to show you. So, yeah, I like books a lot. Yeah, actually, I, I remember I haven't um, revealed the mystery object yet. Have oh, I? Yes. No, that's what I was going to remind you. Do you want you. some I, guesses? Do you want some guesses? I think I know students? what it is. Okay, yeah, so Let's the guesses. Let yeah. me um let me just quickly show it again whilst I scroll back up because we, we had some yeah. um we had some good ones. Okay. So uh Chloe and Alex from London thought maybe it's an anchor. I, I can see why you might think that, because it's very um heavy and indeed you think it could get a good purchase. Uh but no, it's not an anchor. Uh Umar from Leicester said is it yeah, anchor for a small boat. Joshua and Jacob wanted if it was for tying boats to a dock. Yeah. But uh, no. Annabelle from Swan Lee thought maybe it was a, a ropeway for like swinging the lead. <laughs> um, Shaquille from Leicester was concerned it might have been an animal bone. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Anushka from London, is it used for grinding corn? No. Um, and yeah, I think that the rest is. of them are anchor guesses. Yeah, yeah. No, I tell you, tell you what it actually is. I, I, you know, Dallas, you thought you knew what it was, so maybe I'm going to go to you to see whether um, our mastermind well, champion um, knows what it is. I, I've changed my mind because I actually thought, and someone, when it, someone actually said it, and you said it wasn't. I thought it was a thing that attaches to a pole that you use to grab ropes to pull them in on boats or, or that kind of thing. But it's obviously not that. No, no. I tell you where this came from. It came from the top of a church spire and it's for conducting lightning. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll put it down. I'm terrified. That makes sense considering we're doing a, a show all about buildings. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, yes, that was one but of the... Did they know you have it or did you take it without permission or should I not ask? <laughs> no, no. I, I, it was done with full consent of... Good people involved. No, I, I didn't shimmy up to the top of the people <laughs> and just whip it off. Um, but uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of it. Very, um, very interesting. And of course, not very technical, but uh, a good story behind it. Um, so Ali, are the, uh, you, you're, you are taking note of the, the vote. I am. Um, yeah. I think we can call it. Um, but it, it's so wow. close. It's so, it's so close. Wow. <laughs> um, almost well pretty much every single building got um at least two votes so it's a well done um wow or yeah. sorry no at least at least one vote but it was it was super close so do you want do you want like the, the top few yep because it was cool. it was joint level so in joint second place um we had the upcycle arc from florence very good yeah brilliant job uh we also had the david lloyd club of the future from Yves Francois <laughs> was joint second. Um, also joint second was the Floating Forest Drome by Jacob. And also joint second is uh, The Pigeon Palace by Theo. Yay! Yeah. Um, My pigeon so excited about that. Uh, the Pupil's Choice then, the, the Pupil's Choice building um, is the, the Tree from Kitty, which was in our most fun category uh, at the end there. But it, it, was, it was so, so close. 
Yeah. Brilliant. No, no. Well, the, it, it, it's always interesting to see the buildings that um, a, a appeal to you. And as I said at the beginning, normally you would have a chance to to chat to all of the other students and find out a little bit more. Yeah. And and that's something that we really emphasise at Team Tech is that. Uh, it's not about, um, you know, have I got the best building or haven't I? But it is about, you know, everyone who has done this project and it has taken time and effort and imagination and creativity. Uh, these are people who you may want to be connecting with in the future and forming your design companies because, you know, together you really could change not only our cities, but our, our world. Uh, so it's really important to pay attention to what other people are doing and think, could I work with them? You know, they're really imaginative. So, you know, that, that's what we really hope to engender. Can I just read out a few final comments? Because um, there's, there's, there's a great one here. So um, Annabelle from East Mosley says, thank you for showing my school at the end. All the buildings today were amazing. Um, and Clara loved the transforming, oh, uh, sorry, Kitty from London, from the, the tree that won, that was the one where we had the gully in the house. Um, a message came through from her dad saying he would be happy to hire any of our model makers to help repair his floor. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, can I just say to the dad, a great act of uh, family <laughs> sacrifice that the floor was dug up um, to enable the design to look as good as it did. Mm. Floors, where we're going, we don't need floors. <laughs> <laughs> floors are old school. <laughs> Brilliant. I want, to, I want to say a big thanks to all our wonderful experts who've been here judging today and for their time and their wonderful expertise. Um, it's been really, really fantastic having you all and being able to, you know, from a professional point of view, I really get the sense that you look at these projects as really viable ideas, particularly in terms of design philosophy. Absolutely. I mean, I, we mentioned uh, human-centered design and design thinking and, and prototyping and testing your prototypes. I, th I think we saw one of the models being tested in a bath in one of the uh, videos uh, is, is key to it. And I can only encourage everyone who's participated to keep doing that. It, yeah. it is the best way to come up with, your, with the design. It really is. Yeah, and, and sometimes it's fun um, in a different kind of way when you um, test your idea and it doesn't quite work out. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say that happens a lot of the time and it's all part of the, the design process. And obviously really important at the model stage to find out, well, it's not, felt like a good idea, but maybe it's not going to work. Um, so, yeah, uh, just to echo Dallas there, massive thank you to all of our experts. And of course, um, a lot of people have been supporting the project over the past uh, months. Um, it will continue over the summer, so uh, do let your um, friends know and if, you, if they go to different schools or whatever, you know, they're very welcome to join in and take part in our wonderful Team Tech Summer School. Mm -hmm. and and some of those experts, Ali, um, are going to be featuring in our innovation sessions. And we, we thought this would be a good point just to show you some of the sessions that you could take part in. Yes, yeah, so you, you can register for the sessions at athome.teamtech.com. Uh, the summer school kicks off on Wednesday, uh, so next Wednesday, on a session on cybersecurity with BT. Following that, myself and Kate Russell are doing a workshop on game design. And then the week after that, we've got a virtual reality and augmented reality session with Rolls Royce. And then Dallas is joining me with uh, Susie Imber um, to do a session on space yes. the week after that. <laughs> and then there will um, be space suits. <laughs> there will be space suits. And then <laughs> on the two weeks following that, we've, we've got a, a couple of weeks of practical workshops where we'll be showing you how to do some animation um, with a professional animator. And then I'll be doing some coding sessions on, on the final week um, as well. So it's going to be a really, really great summer. Every single one of those allows you to work on a project, a bit like we did with City Tomorrow, and get expert feedback at the end of the week um, as well. So you can sign up for those. It's at home.teamtech.com. Yeah, yeah. So um, thank you once again for all of your brilliant ideas, your wonderful designs, the way that you've really challenged all of our thinking and we've got a, a few messages just to close with now which have come from some of the other experts who've been supporting the project.
very well done to everybody that's been involved in the program. You've worked so hard. I've been really, really impressed with your ideas. It's how you took the time to consider the ecological impact of the buildings you've designed over this period. The creativity and the variety of ideas, um, different types of buildings and different types of ideas to really solve the sustainability problems and really meet everyone's needs going forward. You've come up with solutions I'd never thought of for some of the problems that we posed to you. I also found it interesting how you considered technology in the buildings and cities of the future. Not just interaction with the building, but also how occupants in the building could use technology to interact between themselves. I've been so, so impressed by all of the amazing ideas that you've been coming up with. I really enjoyed being a part of a City of Tomorrow virtual series. You're very well done indeed for taking part. I hope you've got as much out of the programme as certainly I've got from uh, being able to provide some feedback. And I'm really hopeful that you are the future of STEM.